Hello everybody, this is Simon with Let's Play Mega Man 7. There is only one more Robot Master remaining and of course we're going to go there and check out Cloud Man. I do want to mention a little point of pride here, which also might explain if you think this video is just a tiny bit sloppy, uh, but uh, this is my practice recording. Like I just fired up the game, I had not played this stage in years and I just aced it. it was not too difficult. So if you are just starting out with the game yourself, maybe a good time to start with this level here because I've been saying, ah, don't start with Freeze Man, maybe don't start with Junk Man. Uh, this is fine to start with, I think. Um, this and Burst Man are probably the easiest two stages of the original. Uh, it does help if you have a really, really, really good weapon, however, as I just showed off with Junk Shield, you can just ignore the entire first part of the stage and just be on your merry way. Hit the weather control robot with just a single buster pellet to make it go away. It is placed in a way that you really want to interact with so that it isn't, you know, in the way. Uh, and then starts raining. However, if you do have the freeze cracker, and this is where a bunch of freeze crackers actual use comes in because, boy, I'm not going to use it as a weapon, um, is uh, it makes it snow. And uh, apart from the aesthetic considerations, it does have quite a few more uses that we're going to see later on in the stage. This is a really cool stage for these kinds of interactions and definitely something that Mega Man 7 excels at. It's not something that Mega Man 7 invented in any way, uh, because we have seen this kind of weather control shenanigans already in Mega Man X2, if you have been following every single Mega Man release in chronological order, um, but it is still something that is quite fun and it's nice that they did it in my opinion. This screen is boring. It's There's just not really much to it. There are a few of these cannons for which I have a beautiful weapon to kill them immediately and then we just stand there. Like, there is no spe specific danger attached to this. Even if you get hit by the enemies, these platforms are very generous. It has nothing to do with the fact that they seem to be covered in snow. They are actually covered in clouds. These platforms are covered in snow now and that's very nice because otherwise they would be invisible. We're going to see that afterwards because I just wanted to, you know, show all of this off. Anyway, enough getting hit by random enemies because I have a busted shield weapon here. Uh, it's not quite as incredibly strong as the jewel satellite is and oh, I can't get up there by the way. I didn't know that because again, blind recording, <laughs> so I have to go back. Um, but um, it is still extremely good and by far the best shield weapon we have seen in the entire series so far um, because the previous ones all had some major flaws and this one's flaw is just that you're like, okay, I guess sometimes I have to reapply it after it has killed like 20 enemies for me. Uh, the only thing that it cannot do is block projectiles. Okay, I, I'll give it that. Anyway, this jump is kind of tricky going over here, but if you do that, you get the final plate. And now we have R-U-S-H, which does mean rush. And with rush completed, we now have the super adapter, a completely new item for this game, which kind of combines the flying and the punching adapters from Mega Man 6. So how's that for innovation, huh? This is a really, really cool thing. It is also kind of reminiscent of the armors in the Mega Man X games. Again, this came out afterwards, so then maybe it was a different team, but they must have known what was happening over there for other um, Mega Man games. And the Super Adapter is quite strong, actually, as you can tell. I have no respect for the Joes here. It can just immediately kill them. I don't know why they made it so. This is a specific weakness. It's not like the Joe has like three health or anything. They are actually kind of resilient, but um, I do have both of the weaknesses. There is something here, by the way. I was just, again, a centimeter off, so you'll have to excuse me while I recast Rush anyway. Uh, have I mentioned yet that I'm not super fond of this mechanic? It's just, um, you know, and it's not necessary in the slightest, at least. Yeah, what we are getting here is another big bolt, so another 100 units of currency for stuff that we can also find underground. So it's like, if you only find half of the secrets, uh, if the mixture is correct, it doesn't really matter, because either you find uh, the bolts to pay for it, or 
you find the stuff and don't need the bolts. So yeah, anyway, Junk Shield isn't feel good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It can also kill Joes, as we just saw. It gets rid of the entire shield, but it's just like it's one damage per tick on off it hitting an enemy and it rotates so it hits it automatically. So that's really nice. This ladder is one of the most obvious secrets you can think of and what we have here, telegraphed by the famous, famous melody. It's our bro, it's Protoman. And he has some very, very sage advice, which we actually cannot implement right now at the moment, um, which is always a little bit confusing. And he's like, use the flame weapon. We don't have a flame weapon in the woods. We don't know what the woods stage is, but did you just like put a pin on it? Keep it in mind. Um, he's correct. Uh, that's the correct thing to do in, in, the, um, in the woods level. Anyway. Um, the super adapter has a few drawbacks. Um, you can't change the angle of your flight at all. So it's not like in Mega Man 6 where uh, you can actually do a lot of uh, fine control in the air and you're required to do it for a few secrets. Here it's just like it's this diagonal angle always. So this can be a problem. I just had issues getting up on the platform. I'm trying with a freeze cracker, okay? I'm really trying. It's just it's a single point of damage and there is not much you can do with it. Um, so yeah, okay, let, let's go back to, to, to better weapons, shall we? Um, not easy to hit stuff with the junk shield either, but uh, yeah, this, this part of the stage is best done with the buster. Anyway, and the other problem with the super adapter is you can't slide with it. Not at all, which is going to be um, a more obvious issue in a bit um, later on. But first we have reached the end of the stage in a classic airman reference, of course, uh, with uh, birds dropping more birds, smaller birds, peepees, one could say. Um, and now we have to deal with Cloudman. Cloudman is flying up a lot, which could be obnoxious, but he's also coming down a lot, so it's, it's not actually. Um, this is his most dangerous move, because as you can probably tell, there are no platforms at the side. They very deliberately showed you that the platform is falling away. And then what he does is rush you. He just, you know, uses his big butt to, to bonk into Mega Man, fully knowing that the most damage a Robot Master can do is with his bulk. Um, and the real issue here is that you just have to fight against the wind, might be hit by his constant attacks with the lightning bolts while uh, you are trying to avoid them. But otherwise, if you do know the timing of his lightning attack here, yep, it, or you can also slide away as I just shown off, uh, then this is definitely the biggest issue in the fight. He's also sometimes invulnerable whenever a lightning impacts him. Uh, he might be off screen, so you might not be able to tell what he's actually doing. So as I said, quite difficult sometimes to get the timing right, but overall it's not that bad and his damage is absolutely manageable overall. So I think this is definitely not one of the harder fights. Once you know that you can just slide, slide, slide against both of his wind blowing attack and his ramming attack, um, then it's not a big deal. And I do like that they are like forcing the slide here a little bit, like making you use your move sets and not just like dance around a robot master that is super patterned uh, by jumping at the right time and shooting at other times. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. You can power machines with it, huh? That's interesting. Um, yeah, for the future, not today, but we are going to definitely use it for that and to kill a bunch of enemies because Thunderbolt is a really, really strong weapon. I've said that about Junk Shield as well, but Thunderbolt is probably the most generally useful weapon. You can just go, oh yeah, I'm just going to use this for the entire stage, it's fine. Anyway. After the fourth Roadmaster a cutscene starts, we're not going to take a look at the full cutscene because it segues immediately into a short intermediary level, which I want to give its extra video for. So just for continuity, this is how the cutscene starts and I'm deliberately cutting it off. So I hope uh, you understand what, what I mean with that. So this is going to be continued. This is my screen. I'm editing this in and we're going to pick up from that next video. However, I want to show off how this stage looks like if you don't use the gimmick. So if you are not shooting this guy with freeze cracker, it doesn't do anything. Um, and then you have to contend with the stage being in rain all the time. You can avoid the first one, but um, you know, if you want to, uh, but the rain is also different and kind of nice aesthetic. This platform is it's very suspicious, isn't it? Like, why is there a platform here? There is nothing for this platform to work with, unless, maybe, I just came up with that, maybe they want you to use Rush Chat here if you have it, which we don't, uh, but for the search, there's nothing here. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show off that Rush can find useful items, that generically useful items like this weapon energy. Um, but uh, here, by the way, demonstration, projectiles, can, can still go through there. 
Um, and freeze cracker, maybe, maybe that helps. Like, maybe here, one and two. Nah, it's just it's too slow. You can't rapid fire it. Let's just forget about it for now. I'm, I'm trying, okay? Um, but sometimes even I am not succeeding. Anyway, this is what I wanted to show off. If you are here in the rain or the sun, then you can't see these platforms. And uh, that makes things quite difficult indeed. You will have to feel your way out a little bit. Fortunately, it is designed quite well. You can always see a tiny pixel at the very least of an edge of a platform underneath you. So you never have to be like completely blind guessing where to jump. And if you jump over here, you will see the secret platform up there. So it's not completely obscure even if you don't have the freeze cracker. However, uh, I'm just simulating what you would do if you were just like figuring it out yourself. Um, you will have to double back slowly, be very careful with how to jump up there, feel your way around. It is absolutely possible, as I said, but definitely a good idea to freeze it. And here, completely blind jump. And as I've hinted at, it's, it's very difficult to, to hit this properly, especially if you don't see where it's going. And then you fall into complete chaos, which grinds the SNES's processor to a halt. Uh, the slowdown is insane when there are so many sprites at, at the screen at once. Um, it's nice that they like can do that, but it's probably not the best idea uh, to, to have two enemies potentially on screen at the same time that spawn a total of eight more. Uh, because, you know, you run into problems hard, as you can tell here. Uh, but I kind of managed uh, with a little bit of judicious damage tanking and so on. And uh, now I have the super adapter again, so that's cool. Anyway, all of this is non-canon, basically. So I'll meet you back again at the boss, where I'm going to show off a uh, further power of the super adapter, which I think plays a bit into what the Mega Buster can't do, and that is three damage to bosses. Uh, it's a little bit hard to count these, but yes, the super adapter's charge shot actually deals three points of damage to Cloud Man, who is specifically slightly weak to it. It is not always three damage to every boss, but it is to Cloud Man. And there is another weakness here. As I said, you can't slide, so you can barely, barely, barely not fall off but you can't really easily avoid Cloudman. That's why I ran into his ass and died. And this is the story of why we're not going to use a super adapter for every boss, but it's fun. Thank you very much for your attention.